So, hello, uh, my name is uh, Marina Günther and I will be presenting uh, Ecology Meets Wood Material Science Drivers of Kelo Wood Formation in Forest Ecosystems. So this here is a kelo tree. A kelo tree is a silver-colored, deep-barked, dead Scots pine tree, so Pinus sylvestris. We do not know exactly why these, uh, why some pine trees turn into kellows after they die, and some do not. But this is something that we are studying in our kello project. What uh, makes these uh, kello, these pine kello trees so special is that they may stay standing for even several hundred years after they have died. This kind of decay, re decay resistance seems to be unique to kellows in the boreal forest forests. <laughs> So why and how uh, do kelotrees for kelo trees form and uh, to be able to, to resist decay for such a long time? Um, I will try to answer this question to questions to the um, uh, chemistry of wood material. So in other words, could we be able to see the decay resistance of kelotrees as a different chemical composition than the that of the wood material of other dead pines. And if so, uh, what are the drivers of this? So I will look at extractives from the wood material, like um, phenolic compounds and resin acids. And I will use methods like chromatography and spectral imaging. So firstly, I will um, take the samples from uh, natural kellows and other dead pines and compare their chemical composition. And after that, I will take a closer look at some of the factors that have been proposed to be causing this kello wood formation. So fire scarring and injuring of the pine. So in order to do this, I will take samples from uh, fire scarred individuals and pine trees that were injured in different ways in an experimental setup. Uh, and then I will uh, compare the chemical composition of these samples to sample wood material samples taken from natural kellows. So hopefully by the end of this uh, four-year project, we will be able to answer uh, why kello trees form, what are the drivers of this formation, and are there possible ways that we could uh, promote the kello trees to remain as a prominent characteristics of our boreal forests. Um, thank you. Uh, if you want to follow our project, you can do so on our website, kelokko.fi. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Marina. A lot of work going on on kelo trees, if I understand, at the UFE. Is there any question for Marina? Yeah, exactly. Yes, I, I want to. Oh, uh, sorry, Xavier first and then Ari. Um, how, long, how, uh, travel, uh, um, how frequent are the, the kilo trees uh, in the landscape? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it, they uh, in natural forests, like in old growth forests, they can be quite like common. So like, like almost half of the dead pines can be like silver colored. So they are not that uncommon, but in like in our managed forests, they of course are not that uh, common. Okay, Ari, you can go. Yes, on. It, it only uh, mm, uh, only pine trees can transform into this kind of this kind kind of trees, skull trees, or it's also common for our species of coniferous trees. And if it's only pine, uh, it's only uh, the case for pine trees or for our species as well. Thank you. So um, the term kello, at least in Finnish language, can, can also be used for like other deep arced um, the trees like like um, like spruce. But um, what makes the difference of this like actual kello that we are talking about, the Pinus sylvestris ones, uh, they they are the only ones who seem to be this like decay resistant that they can stay standing for such a long time that. No other, so to speak, kello trees are like that decay resistant and don't fall and fall quite um, um, quickly, so to speak. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.